Hi guys, I'm Chai. I'm a paediatric immunology and allergy specialist working in Sydney. I've today been asked to give a talk on eczema and eczema associated food allergies. So I guess my key point to take home, if you're gonna take home anything, is routine, routine, and more routine. Okay, it's really important. It sounds really silly and really basic, but routine is everything when it comes to eczema. Any dropping off from routine can lead to an eczema flare and we don't want that. So the topics I'm gonna to talk about in particular, you guessed it, is the routine that I prescribe to my patients. And then I'm gonna talk about eczema and um, what to do with flares, in particular steroid use. And finally, I'm gonna talk about triggers with eczema and you know what I've just mentioned, um, in the topic as I were talking about is eczema associated food allergies. So I guess I'm an allergist, so it's you know one of those things I really like talking about. Okay, to start with, routine, routine, routine. So I often prescribe my um, patients a routine um, for what to do when the skin looks really good. Um, so maintenance therapy is what they call that, and then what to do when the skin flares. Um, I often write it all down on a piece of paper because I find it really difficult myself even to remember sometimes um, creams and things. So I find it easy for parents to then digest and know what to do when they go home. And so to start with the maintenance therapy that I talked about when the skin looks really good starts off with the shower or bath. So in the shower or bath, I suggest using lukewarm water rather than hot water. The reason being is when it's hot water, it actually in fact dries the skin out. So we want to avoid that. Um, following that, if you wanted to wash your child down with just water, I'm really happy for that to happen. But if you want to use a product in the shower or bath, I suggest using something that does not contain any perfumes, um, fragrances, alcohol, or food products in particular. And I'll talk to you about why I don't like food products, okay? So the next thing is um, when you're drying your child down, always pat dry, do not rub vigorously. And the reason being is if you're rubbing again, you're gonna really irritate the skin and flare eczema. So then following that, moisturize. And I suggest moisturizing at least two to three times a day even when the skin looks really good, okay? So head to toe moisturizing. I would suggest using a cream rather than a lotion, and the reason being it's just better for eczema skin, okay? It, lotion just a bit too watery. Um, products, again, um, that I would advise you use are those that do not contain frankincense, perfumes, and again, food products, okay? So my usual suggestions to patients are Dermes, QV, or E45. Um, so I'll now talk to you, I guess, around why I don't like food products on the skin. Uh, the reason being is, the, with eczema in particular, the skin barrier is broken down quite a bit, and so anything you put on the skin can be absorbed very easily into the body. Now, for some reason, we don't know why, when your body is exposed to food products through the skin, sometimes it reacts poorly and goes, I don't like that food. So when you then feed your child that food, they can then have a poor reaction to it and actually have what we call an IgE mediated reaction, which can result in things like hives or what we call urticaria, swelling, vomiting, breathing difficulties. So basically can lead to anaphylaxis. So we really do not like putting food on the skin with eczema in particular. So then what do we do about a flare? So what we've just talked about is the day-to-day -day management when the skin looks really good. So when the skin flares, what do we do? So in addition to the things we just talked about, we need to add in steroids, okay? And the reason being is steroids will help heal the skin. Moisturizing on its own won't do the trick, unfortunately, okay? And look, we're very good with the um, prescription of steroids. We know that parts of the skin are a bit more sensitive than others and thin. So we often prescribe different potencies. And so when I say potencies, I mean different strengths of um, steroid creams. Say on the face of the eyelids, we go quite light compared to the body. So a lot of people come to me and go, well, doctor, I used the steroids and they didn't work. So there's a few reasons to why this commonly does not work for people. The first thing is um, they're using the wrong potency, so the wrong strength of steroid. Um, they're applying it incorrectly, and we'll talk through how to apply it correctly. Or three, they're just not applying enough, so putting you know very sparing amounts on. So we'll talk through those. So what you've got to do when you use the steroid is straight after the bath, pat skin dry, um, and then you apply the steroid, 
okay? So that's number one mistake that people often make is when they apply the steroid. So often people, um, without realizing or knowing, um, is they put the moisturizer on first and then the steroid. And that's a big no-no. And the reason being is that moisturizer acts like a barrier. So nothing can really get through. So the steroid isn't effective. The other thing that people often do is they mix the steroid and the moisturizer together and then apply it. Don't do that either. Okay, okay, so steroid on first. Then how much? So what I like to tell people about is the fingertip method. So this is kind of a bit of prescription of how much to use because it's really hard with creams to know how much to use. It's not like tablets where you go, um, you know, one tablet or this many mils of um, whatever antibiotic it is. So what I like to tell people about is the fingertip method. So what that basically is, is you put, use your own finger, so not your child's, your adult finger, and you put cream on um, your fingertip, which we call one fingertip unit. So I'll show you where you put the cream from and to. So you put the cream at the tip down to that first crease there, okay? So there to there. So that measure is called one fingertip unit. So on different parts of the body, you use different amounts of fingertip units, and you also use varying amounts of fingertip units for different age groups. So what I've done is I put a link down below for you guys to have a look at, um, which goes through, again, what the measurement is exactly for you. And it also tells you how many fingertip units to use on different parts of the body for different ages. So it's, you know, there for you, so you know exactly how much to use, so you're not using too much or too little, okay? So then, um, to talk about it, keep using it until the skin clears up, okay? So often people uh, are very scared of steroid creams um, or ointments, but we're, you know, we know what to use and where to use it and for how long. So if we've advised you to keep using it, keep using it until the skin completely clears and then stop it. And then, great, once the skin has cleared up, go back to the original regime. So the original regime is bath or shower and then moisturize two to three times a day. And then again, to go through it, if there's a flare, bath or shower, steroid on next, then moisturizer, steroid and then moisturizer. We usually advise when you've had a flare to use the steroids two to three times a day as well. Okay, so again, there are other things that can be used for flares. So if your child's skin isn't improving um, with the treatments we just talked about, I would suggest seeing your GP or your doctor about it. And the reason being is they might need other medications like antibiotics, antivirals, or might need to go on to other things like bleach bars um, or even wet dressings. I'm not gonna go into those ones today, okay? We can talk about that another time if people are interested. So then to talk about what can flare eczema. So the things that can flare eczema vary between every individual person. So in some people, all these things might flare their skin. In some people, it might not. And also in some people, we might just never find what flares it. Eczema is one of those things. It is a roller coaster ride. So even if you're managing the skin really well with all the things we just talked about, it can just flare and you have no answer. And it's really annoying. People often come to me and go, Doctor, why does it keep flaring? And I can't provide you with that answer because eczema is one of those things. It's a bit naughty, doesn't like to listen all the time. So things that can flare eczema. So if you notice that these things do flare your child's eczema, think about maybe avoiding them. Um, some things can be sand, so sand pits in particular or the beach, uh, <laughs> any weather basically. So um, extreme weathers basically. Um, so a hot day, a humid day, a dry day, those things can flare eczema. Other things are bubble baths, so avoid them as much as you can. Clothing in particular that's really itchy can flare eczema, so we like to avoid wool on the skin. Use things like cotton instead, because that, you know, um, is a bit nicer for eczema. The other thing that can flare eczema at times is dust mites. So if you notice when your child has been playing on carpet and things, and then the eczema flares on the areas that were touching, was touching the carpet, then consider maybe could it be dust mites. Um, the last thing as well can be chlorinated pools, okay? Actually, there is one last thing that can flare eczema. So that is food. So we'll talk about that now. Okay, again, there is no cause for eczema that we know of. Actually, I don't think I mentioned that. There is no cause for eczema that we know of yet. We're figuring it out still. 
So often people go, food's causing the eczema. In fact, no, it isn't. It may be flaring the eczema though, but I think it's overcalled a lot of the time that you know people want an answer for why the eczema's there in their child, so they start to think, could it be the food? But often it's not, but in some cases it is, and we'll talk through those scenarios today. So there's kind of three scenarios that I like to talk to of when it could be food that's causing the eczema to flare. So the first one is with um, a usually baby or toddler, where we're using all the measures we just talked about, including then on top of it, bleach baths and wet dressings, and the skin is just not improving, okay? And in those children, they're usually the ones who have head to toe, red raw eczema, poor things, it's really sad to look at. So in those children, usually why their skin is so inflamed and generally inflamed is because we are unknowingly feeding them a food that they're allergic to. So then what happens is you give them that food, it's absorbed into their body and it just irritates all of their skin, okay? So in those children, yes, it could be the food and it's really important to try an elimination diet. But with that, it needs to be done in caution and needs to be done with an allergy specialist, okay? There's two main reasons as to why that's the case. So the first thing is, if you start taking big food groups out of your child's diet, you can cause big problems with their nutrition and their growth, okay? The second thing is that in fact, if you take a food out of a child's diet for a long enough time, you can in fact cause a food allergy. All right, so the reason being for that is for some reason, and we again, don't really understand it, when the body is no longer exposed to a food, it decides it thinks it's foreign. So if you then feed your child that food again, they can react badly to that. They can have an IgE mediated um, reaction, which again could lead to things like anaphylaxis. So we don't want to do that, okay? So really, really important to do that in conjunction with your allergy specialist. So the second kind of scenario that I like to go through um, of when food could be flaring uh, eczema is if the child is experiencing what we call immediate allergic symptoms or IgE mediated reactions to a food. And the reason why that flares the eczema is it causes itchy skin, which can then flare the eczema, okay? So in that scenario, that's when you give a child a particular type of food group and then within the hour, they start to develop symptoms. And so the symptoms that they start to develop are things like those itchy hives or urticaria. They can get swelling, tummy upset, vomiting, runny or itchy eyes, a sniffly nose, sneezing, or they can start to get breathing difficulties, coughing, even dizziness and collapse. In those cases, please stop that food in your child's diet and see your doctor and get a referral to an allergy specialist to talk to them about it, okay? So then the last scenario where, um, this one's a bit hard as well to big, try tease out and figure out, okay? Um, this is when um, eczema can be flared due to a food, but it's usually a few hours later after eating the food. And I will press. It is when you give your child a particular food group. So when I say a food group, I mean like wheat, egg, dairy, soy. And then three to four hours later, they become profusely itchy, okay? And I mean, this is reproducible. So every time you give them that particular food group, they get symptoms. Not that, doctor, they're just itchy all the time and we can't figure out what's causing it. Well, in that case, it's probably just eczema and you just need to maintain the skin um, integrity a bit better and treat the eczema and then things will settle down, okay? With itchiness, the best cure for that or treatment as such, not cure, um, is moisturizing, okay? That really settles down itch. So in this case where you are seeing reproducibly every three to four hours or so after giving them a food group that they're getting itchy, what do we do? Talk to us about it and we'll make a plan. Often a lot of the time we don't actually remove the food group and the reason being is it's better to keep that food group in rather than not and we talk about maintaining um, our routine and keeping the skin under control. But in some cases we might need to think about reducing it or taking it out but we'll make that, make that call depending on how uh, your child's going, okay? So that's it for me from today um, on eczema and eczema associated food allergies if you have any questions feel free to pop and pop them in the comments below or just any comments in general um, i really enjoyed giving that talk today and, and hopefully i'll give you more soon okay bye now